this is the first uh, first part of a two part video on um, on the basic principles of switch mode power conversion as applied to the uh, DC to DC converters uh, in this part we will review the, um, uh, the the basic building block or the bipositional switch that is found in almost all switch mode power converters then we will review the uh, concepts of cycle by cycle averaging um, control through duty ratio and pulse width modulation and finally the concept of steady state as applied to switch mode converters the most basic component in um, most switch mode power converters is this bipositional switch and we call it the building block block so it essentially is a single pole double throw switch meaning the pole a or the point a can be connected to one of two positions one or two here so essentially point a is connected either to the positive end of uh, this dc voltage or to the negative end of the dc voltage uh, in uh, in any switch mode converter essentially we control any control objectives by controlling the switching pattern of uh, one or more such bipositional switches but uh, in an electronic implementation we do not have a single device that can serve the purpose of an SPDT so therefore we realize an SPDT by two SPSTs the SPST stands for single pole single throw these are essentially basic on off switches so if you want to connect point A to, to the positive end, we have the top switch on and the bottom switch off. And if you want the other um, option which is connecting uh, pole A to the negative end, we have the bottom switch on and the top switch off. And we should never have both the switches on simultaneously. And that is ensured by this uh, switching pattern. So the pulse width modulator is the one that converts a control voltage to these switching pulses to control these switches and it is given directly to the top switch and the same signal is inverted and given to the bottom switch thus ensuring that you will never have a situation where both the devices are on simultaneously the capacitor and the inductor here these are not part of the building block or the bipositional switch they are shown here to emphasize the fact that the uh, voltage across the two positions is uh, usually a fairly constant DC voltage and the current through the pole is also a fairly constant DC current in the DC DC converter example now to complete the building block so we have the bipositional switch with these two constraints and um, we also have this pulse width modulator as I said this con uh, converts the control voltage to the switching pulses the convention that we will be following uh, here is that uh, if Q is 1, it means the top switch is on uh, or the pole A is connected to the positive end of the DC voltage and when that happens, the voltage V sub A N, which is the pole voltage with respect to the DC negative, this is exactly equal to V sub D because the switch is on and uh, when Q is uh, 0, the, the, the switching signal Q can take only two values, either 1 or 0 and when it is 0, then it means the switch is in position uh, in the, the the bottom switch is uh, turned on and that results in the same voltage V sub A N being 0 this, this is just shorting out V A N the actual electronic implementation of the bipositional switch is shown here so if you want um, the uh, pole current to be really bidirectional meaning I A can be both positive and negative then we need this full complement of four switches two control switches um, two IGBTs are shown here it could be an IGBT or a MOSFET for a DC to DC converter these are control switches and its conduction can be controlled by the gate drive applied uh, and we also need these two diodes for um, for um, this um, IA to be in general positive and negative now if you know that in um, most DC DC converters it is the case that the current I sub A is always positive from left to right uh, as shown here then we need only one control switch and one diode so for example if we um, turn on the um, the pen so I A is always positive and if Q is uh, 1 then the current is through the switch in this direction now if Q is 0 then the current is uh, still needs to be in the same direction and therefore the bottom device which is the diode it's in the right direction to support a current in this direction so all we need is one control switch and one diode but if the current is both positive and negative then we need the other switch and the diode to support current in the opposite direction in a switching converter the various control objectives they are controlled by controlling the average of the output of one or more power poles uh, 
Now this slide deals with the actual implementation or the, uh, the mechanism by which this control of the power pole is achieved. Now all the uh, switching converters, they have a closed loop feedback controller and that generates a control signal V sub C based on the current operating conditions and the given control objectives. Now this control signal is um, inside this pulse width modulator is compared with an internally generated V ramp as, uh, as shown here. Now the convention we use is uh, whenever VC is higher than V triangle then Q is 1 and if VC is less than the V triangle or the V ramp then Q is 0 and that is illustrated in this figure so from the region from here till here VC is higher than the V ramp therefore Q is 1 and uh, therefore VAN the pole output is equal to V sub B when Q is 1 now from this region up to this point at the end of uh, the first uh, switching period um, VC is less than uh, v, v ramp as you can see here and therefore Q is 0 and in response VAN is also 0 now we can draw the average of this VAN and that is shown along this dotted line and by changing the pulse width or the, the duration for which Q remains 1 we can control this average voltage for example if uh, VC is, is some lower value uh, say somewhere here as shown here then the intersection of VC and V ramp happens at this point so up to this point in time Q is 1 and at that instant Q becomes 0 because VC has, less than, has become less than V ramp beyond this point so it remains 0 till the end of this switching period now switching period is 1 is 1 over the switching frequency as indicated here so FS is the switching frequency of the power pole and it is same as the the carrier or the uh, the triangle or the ramp frequency 1 over FS is the switching period so that is the instant so as shown here TS is from here till here that is 1 over FS okay. so in our example uh, this is the point where we see intersects V ramp so Q becomes 0 at that instant and remains 0 and in the next period becomes high and at this point of intersection becomes 0 again and so on in response VD also will have the same wave shape as Q sub A so therefore VD waveform for the new value of VCA would be something like this goes here comes down at this point and so on and corresponding to this new value of uh, VAN its average value would be somewhere here uh, a lower average value so this is the process of controlling the average output voltage by changing the pulse width which um, in turn is uh, controlled by this control signal VCA this process is called as pulse width modulation now let's also define an important um, parameter called the duty ratio uh, duty ratio for pole A D sub A is defined as the uh, T on that is the duration for which Q is 1 for that pole within one switching period so the duration T on over TS is defined as the duty ratio and duty ratio is the main control variable which we use to control various control objectives in switch mode power converter then we will look at um, some examples of um, using this pulse width modulation to achieve different control objectives for example let's say we have a variable input uh, something that can change between 10 volts to 14 volts and let's say we want a con constant average output voltage at the um, at the output of this power pole then uh, for example when the input V in uh, is 10 volts then this would be the pulse width so roughly one half of the switching period the Q is 1 or the um, top switch is on for the remaining period it is 0 so the average of this is uh, 5 volts but if the input voltage this VN goes to 14 volts then we would reduce the pulse width so that the average value of um, VA or VAN uh, is still retained at 5 volts so this is a lower pulse width resulting in same 5 volts um, output with varying input another example would be uh, let's say you have a fixed input voltage but you want a controlled variable output voltage so if you want 6 volts from 12 volts again you would keep this duty ratio which is T on over TS to be 0.5 so you get rough, uh, exactly one half of the input voltage as the output but with the same um, uh, situation if you want a higher output voltage at the pole average 
then you would increase the pulse width say if we increase it to d equals 0.75 then you get an average voltage of 9 volts now we can extend this to generate any arbitrary wave shape from a fixed DC voltage input so this is an example of generating um, a low frequency sine wave now I'm careful to show only the positive half of the sine wave because uh, with this single power pole we cannot get a negative voltage the lowest uh, average voltage we can get is zero we cannot get negative um, but the, the main point here is we can create any arbitrary positive wave shape and uh, you can consider uh, any point in this uh, sine wave, the low frequency wave, to be, um, um, for example, you can focus on this point here, and at this instant, this is the required output voltage, so you can calculate what should be your duty ratio to realize this portion of the, uh, the sine wave, and the corresponding duty ratio can be figured from this uh, switching waveform, which is VAN, and if the input voltage is, uh, I'm sorry, if the um, required uh, wave shape output voltage is higher then you can see we have a correspondingly higher pulse width so by changing the pulse width or the duty ratio we can essentially get uh, any arbitrary wave shape in the last slide we talked about average of uh, various quantities so in this slide we will we will come up with a formal definition for what we mean by this average what we are really talking about is the average of various quantities over a complete switching period TS and we call this average as the cycle by cycle average uh, or CCA now CCA is an important concept because uh, all our control objectives are achieved essentially by controlling the CCA value of different voltages or currents and uh, moreover uh, in all our average models and average uh, base analysis both in steady state and transient we make use of the CCA quantities so the definition of um, CCA uh, is shown here, it's mathematical expression. Um, so before that, the um, we denote the cycle by cycle average with a bar on top. So for example, if you have a signal X of T, its CCA value, average value is denoted by X bar of T. And that is defined as this uh, average or one period. And we um, get that by integrating X of T over one complete period starting from arbitrary t minus ts up to t okay? and that is that integral divided by ts gives us the average over that particular switching period to give us the value of cycle by cycle averaging um, that concept is illustrated with this figure so x of t uh, is a switching signal and if you want its um, cca value at uh, say uh, at a point marked by this red dot then we take the period uh, one complete period before this instance so that is from uh, from this point up to this point covering uh, a total of ts we take the integral of x of t in that period and divided by ts we get its average and that is this red line uh, now in this figure the average uh, seems to be a constant value and uh, that is because uh, x of t is uh, uh, is repeating uh, every cycle it's the same value cycle after cycle therefore its uh, average is just a steady constant now one point to note uh, is that uh, CCA quantities can be time varying even though it is an average over one period this average value can change from you um, know one instant to the other instance so x of t x bar of t is really a time varying quantity now let's look at um, two examples of calculating the CCA values for um, uh, quantities that we have discussed earlier the first is the switching signal q sub a and the second one is the pole output voltage van so let's look at the average value of qa first um, so qa bar the cca value of qa here is the definition for that which is essentially the uh, the integral over one period divided by the period and um, by looking at this waveform for qa we can see that it remains uh, it, it takes on value of one for the duration t on uh, now t on can be time varying meaning t on in one cycle may be different from the next cycle uh, but nevertheless as an expression um, the average of q a is uh, simply t on over t s times one in that particular period so that is what is written here the average value is t on over t uh, divided by t s and by definition this is the duty ratio that we defined in um, two slides earlier
So what you have shown is that the cycle by cycle average of the switching signal Q or Q sub A for pole A is equal to the duty ratio uh, D for that particular pole. Similarly, we can de derive the CCA value for VAN and uh, we can uh, go ahead and apply this the expression for CCA and substitute the corresponding values or we can realize that uh, VAN is simply it has the same wave shape as QA it is just scaled by this factor V sub D therefore VA, VAN of T instantaneously can be written as shown here as the product of V sub D which is assumed to be a constant times the switching signal Q sub A of T and uh, the cycle by cycle average of VAN bar would be VD times the cycle by cycle average of uh, QA bar which we already shown is equal to D, D of T Therefore, the CCA value of VAN or VAN bar is equal to the uh, DC voltage V sub D times the duty ratio D of T. Now, uh, there is a separate video just on CCA and uh, I, will, I would like to urge you to uh, watch that video to get a um, uh, better understanding of the various uh, properties of CCA. Uh, but here I, I, ha I highlight just uh, two of uh, the properties and those are related to the fact that um, the um, KCL and KVL Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws they are uh, valid in an average CC average sense as well and this can be this can prove to be very useful in analyzing especially steady state analysis of uh, different converters so uh, the statement of KCL for an average is that the sum of uh, average currents entering uh, a node is equal to zero. Similarly, KVL would be the sum of uh, all the average voltages going around the loop is equal to zero. It's uh, fairly simple to prove this. Um, so this is the um, expression for the instantaneous KCL which we know very well. And simply um, take the integral of the left hand side and the right hand side and divide by Ts. Um, we, what we get is um, uh, this value is equal to I1 bar second one is I2 bar, this is I3 bar and that is equal to 0 because integral of 0 is 0. So that gives us the, there is a proof that I1 bar or the sum of all the average currents entering the node is equal to 0. So we can do a very similar derivation and show that KVL is also valid in an average sense. That is a sum of the voltage drops or voltage rises around a loop is equal to 0 in an average sense. And then we get into this um, important concept of um, uh, DC steady state. Now, um, as you would expect, we are interested in the uh, DC steady state of uh, switching converters. Uh, but in order to gain a good uh, appreciation for um, uh, this concept of um, steady state, DC steady state in switching converters, let's uh, initially look at how you would define DC steady state in uh, non-switching circuits. So, for example, consider this um, a simple RLC circuit. Um, there is no switching involved here. So initially, let's say um, they all had zero initial conditions, zero inductor current, zero capacitor voltage, and then we apply this 100 volts at T equals zero. Um, this would be the inductor current um, uh, in time uh, after this uh, turning on of this 100 volts, and this would be how the capacitor voltage looks like in time. Um, so there is a um, lot, lot of transients; it uh, shoots up to high values, but eventually they all uh, come to their final steady state constant values. So we would define, I'm sorry, so you define this region where the various quantities are varying in time uh, as the transient portion and the uh, the portion after that uh, highlighted in blue, this would be the steady state region. So essentially we would define DC steady state in this circuit or in simple non-switching circuits as the condition where all the quantities in this example the inductor current the capacitor voltage or the this resistor current all the uh, different voltages and currents in the circuit if they have constant dc value if they have settled down to their final dc constant value then we say we say that the circuit has reached the steady state now in steady state we can also uh, um, define uh, we can also get the characteristics of the inductors and the capacitors now the basic voltage current relationship for an inductor is VL is L di over dt and by definition of DC steady state IL is a constant therefore its rate of change its rate of change is zero or VL is equal to zero. Uh, 
so which means that if you want to analyze uh, the circuit in DC steady state uh, VL is zero therefore the inductor behaves like a short circuit by the same analysis using the uh, IC equals C dV over DT relationship and with VC being constant we can see that IC is zero which means the capacitor behaves like open circuit so we'll see that uh, very similar conditions exist for the switching converters as well the the problem in switching converters is that even in steady state all the the different waveforms the different voltage and current waveforms um, will be a switching waveforms they will be time varying so we cannot define a DC steady state as a condition where all the waveforms are exactly constant because they are switching waveforms so the correct definition for DC steady state in the case of switching converters would be that the uh, cycle by cycle average values of all the variables all the voltages and currents in the circuit if the cycle by cycle average values remain constant then we can say the circuit is in steady state um, another way of saying the same thing in an equivalent definition would, would be to um, require all the waveforms all the current voltage waveforms to repeat exactly every switching period that is if the value of say the pole current I sub A at T plus switching period TS if that is exactly equal to the pole current at T equals T then the circuit uh, is in steady state so uh, for example uh, here are two waveforms in steady state um, the pole output voltage VA uh, you can see it's um, the switching waveform and its average value in red and that remains constant therefore the circuit is said to be in steady state uh, equivalently if you look at um, the switching waveforms is exactly um, the same every cycle for example if you consider a point um, here so this is exactly same as the value of VA at T plus TS somewhere here it's same at T plus 2 TS and so on similarly if you consider this point it is 0 and exactly TS afterwards is also TS it's also 0 Similarly, if you look at the pole current, you can also see its uh, average value, cycle by cycle average, is remaining constant. And the waveform at any instant is exactly the same as the waveform TS seconds before or after. Uh, as against that, these two will be examples of waveforms in a transient or a non-steady state condition. You can see the um, switching waveform, its pulse width keeps increasing. Therefore, it, its value is not repeating exactly every switching period. That is also reflected in the fact that the, the cycle by cycle average value is no longer constant. It is uh, increasing, it is time varying. Um, similarly, the pole current is also increasing. Its average as well as the, the actual instantaneous current, they are increasing in time. Therefore, um, this is an example of a non-steady state. Uh, finally, I should also note that this definition of um, the CCA values being exactly constant is um, it defines only DC steady state and this is suitable for analyzing DC to DC converters but when, later on when we go to analysis of DC to AC or AC DC inverters and rectifiers then we will have to define an AC steady state where instead of the CCA values being constant they will, re they will be um, a sinusoidal of constant frequencies and probably constant amplitude okay. um, so in the next part of um, this basic principles of DC DC converters we will um, look at some of the basic concepts which are valid in DC steady state and they are extremely useful in analyzing um, DC DC converters in steady state